Behind me is the new LG 34UM95 21x9 super wide thunderbolt display. It could have been perfect, except it's flawed. So let's start with the basics. This is a 34 inch screen at a 21 by 9 cinema aspect ratio which is great at watching movies and it's also great at doing any kinds of work or if you just like to have multiple windows open because the extra width that you get with this screen is absolutely amazing. The screen resolution is at 3440 by 1444 something like that I don't know. I'll put it on the screen. Anyway, it's a very high resolution, but not quite 4K, but it's definitely a high resolution compared to the standard 27 inch screen resolutions at 2560 by 1440 that we tend to get these days. So the extra resolution is definitely good because, well, more resolution is better, isn't it? But unfortunately it's not retina or 4K. The other plus point, it is a Thunderbolt display, which is great because it will work with the new MacBook Pro Retinas, only the new ones, the latest ones, for some reason. Maybe it's because of the high resolutions, I'm not too sure, as Apple. And it will also work with the new Mac Pro, the trash can ones. But as you can see, it is running on my MacBook Pro 15 inch Retina and it's running at fine at native resolution connected through the Thunderbolt port. It does have two HDMI and one display port, as well as the aforementioned Thunderbolt display port uh, with a daisy chain out so you can connect multiple display or other accessories through the monitor. It also has three USB ports in the back but unfortunately only one of them is at rated at USB 3, the other two is at USB 2.0 for some strange reason. But here's a crazy little thing, if you're connecting the display through the Thunderbolt, the USB ports actually work as a hub and it connects it through the Thunderbolt um, cable so you don't need to have a separate USB cable going to the screen which I only just found out after reading the manual. Screen quality it is great it reminds me of my previously sold iMac 27 inch so if you have an iMac or if you just go into an Apple store and look at the screen it's kind of like that but with a matte anti-glare film on it it's not too uh, matte as in making it look fuzzy as with some Dell screens or some other anti-glare coatings. So the screen quality itself is absolutely amazing. The color is very bright and vibrant and vivid and the resolution is great. As I mentioned before, it is an IPS panel and it's factory calibrated on all the rest. So I've got nothing negative to say about the screen quality itself. So that's definitely a plus point. The base is actually good. It, again, probably copied from the iMac. It does remind me of the iMac base. It's made of metal with a clear see-through back bit, uh, but it's only made of plastic. So mm, could have been better if it was made from glass, but maybe it needs to be a bit flexible. So in case, you know, I don't know, whatever reason, but it's made of plastic. Moving up, we have the black gloss bezel down the bottom, but the rest of the screen is actually very thin around the edge, which is great because again, it doesn't look like there's a massive thick blackboard around the edge. So again, it makes the display look good just standing there. Next, we have the joystick, which at the bottom, which you can use to navigate the menu system. And the menu is very clear and easy to navigate, which is kind of self-explanatory and it's nice and clear and looks sleek. Again, nothing to fault, it's so easy to use. Now onto the other little details. Well, obviously the screen is at a 21 by nine ratio and it's actually quite a high resolution or a unusual resolution at 3440 by 1444 resolution, somewhere thereabouts. But obviously you need a powerful uh, Windows PC or the latest uh, MacBook Pros and Mac Pro um, computers to run it, as I mentioned before. And if you think about, if you want to run games on it, obviously you need a mega gaming rig to run it because it's almost running at 4K resolution. But I had a brief go at it with running Portal on my Mac and it's a little bit jerky. Obviously I won't get the best frame rate, but it's just about playable. And the experience of playing a game at that kind of widescreen, it's actually really immersive and good. Uh, I was quite surprised. I'm not a regular gamer, but it definitely made it feel quite cool and immersive like playing with such widescreen. So again, the screen is actually really good for playing games. Uh, obviously it's not as fast as a new dedicated gaming screen that you can get these days, but you get the plus point of it being super wide and very immersive, which gives it a very cool gaming experience that I've found. 
Although it has two HDMI inputs, you can use it to plug in a PlayStation 3 or any other gaming consoles in it. But the trouble is because it's a 21 by 9 ratio and all the consoles are designed to be run on 16 by 9, all you get is massive uh, black borders around the top, bottom, left and right. And if you do decide to use one of the menu settings to zoom in a bit, or you will end up cropping the top and bottom. So it's not really ideal ratio for playing console games. So it's best bet is to use a PC to play games on it to get the most out of the screen. Otherwise, you're just gonna waste all the black borders around the edges and might as well use a standard 16 by nine screen. So all in all, I absolutely love this screen. I mean, the colors are great, like I said before, and it's great for watching movies. It's great for entertainment. It's great for doing work on it with the high resolution and widescreen. You can have three browsers open with still some room spare on the side for whatever you want. So basically, this screen is very good for everything. It even has a picture by picture mode so you can have one side of the screen running a game or a TV and the other side you can still use it as a computer screen with adequate amount of space. It's absolutely amazing instead of having dual monitors which I hate because I don't like the bezel right in the middle. Anyway, as I said right at the beginning of the video, there is a major flaw with the screen. Only by the second day or third day, second day or something, when I was working at an quiet environment without no music playing in the background, I noticed on the side of the screen it was making a clicking and ticking noise. If you go on the web and do a quick search on the web for LG clicking, ticking monitor display, you will find that there's many reports of it saying that it could be a capacitor or a transformer or something to do with the power supply that it has the issue, which is a damn annoying problem, which means the screen is faulty. It's either faulty on its design or it's got damage through transit or it's just a badly designed circuit board, which means it has to go. But here's the problem. I don't know if I should get a replacement or not because this screen is 860 pounds. 860 pounds when I bought it. It is very expensive, especially nowadays you can get a 4K 27 inch screen for about five, 600 pounds. Not the best screen in the world in terms of image quality, but still you can get a 4K screen and lots of other options, or you can do triple monitor setup, dual monitor setups with 24 or 27 days and still have some money spare. But this one single monitor is at 860 pounds, which is mega expensive. Although I did find it completely justifiable in the first few days. But like I said, as soon as there's this quality issue, which I am very worried that the next one that I get will have the same one, I don't know if I should buy another one. What do you think? What do you think I should do? Anyway, the first step I really need to do is to pack this bloody thing up and send it back because it's definitely faulty and I need to get rid of it quickly. And then I shall decide if I will get another monitor or not. Hmm. 4K? Dual screen? I don't know.